Welcome to the final part of my Google porting series. In the previous two videos, I covered the porting process of the player, the gameplay and UI elements, as well as the tutorial area of my game Sandfire. In this video, I'm excited to show you the current stages of my first main level, the Inner Tower. As a small reminder, the scene started looking like this and has since evolved into its current still unfinished state. And if you're interested in learning more about the process of building such a scene from scratch, you can check out the very first concepts in one of my older videos. So now, with the recent release of Godo 4, I'm excited to move this scene from the current Godo 3.5 version to the latest Godo 4 version. One of the most interesting aspects of this level is that the inside and the outside areas are swapped, which means that everything is basically an interior room, except for the area in the middle, which is supposed to have a sun and environmental properties. This made it very difficult to light the entire scene accordingly, especially in Godot 3.5. But with Godot 4, they newly added SDFGI, a real-time global illumination system that has made a huge difference in the lightning and overall appeal of the scene. To demonstrate this, I made a camera trolling through the entire area to compare the difference in light and performance between Godot 3 and 4. The performance in Gudo 4 is a lot better, especially when dealing with big scenes that contain many individual objects like this one. Places that are supposed to be dark are much darker and lift places are accordingly bright, creating a proper contrast of the entire area. Plus, due to the new Vulcan renderer, the frames in Godot 3 are about 60 FPS, while in Godot 4 are all 90 FPS on average, making Godot 4 a real game changer. To further improve the performance in Google 4, I used the visibility range function to cull unneeded objects like bricks that are positioned far in the distance. While working in Godot 4, I noticed that the loading times of large 3D scenes are much quicker than in Godot 3, which is a huge time saver, especially when I need to do a lot of testing and editing within these scenes. Additionally, I can also add many Omni light sources in Godot 4, compared to the limited number of lights per object in Godot 3.5. In this scene, I tested the limits of lights in Godot 4, with more than 100 lights in one dedicated scene. Although the performance was still great, uh, I had to reduce the amount of lights because of frequent crashes. I also want to highlight the improvements made to the shader language in Godot 4, including particle shaders as well. For example, to draw different flocks of grass in a circle, I use a noise texture in a custom particle shader. One interesting aspect is that in Godot 3.5, particles are not cooled properly and are still rendered in the center of the particle node. While in Godot 4, this is no longer a problem since the particles are not visible at this point. Moving on, I also wanted to share how I created the waterfalls for a community challenge back in February 2022. For them, I use a simple particle system and added a refractive material to the particles. For the splash texture, I used a scrolling mask texture on a custom 3D model with adjusted UVs to create this effect. If you are interested in learning more about this, you can find the blog post in the video description. And while talking about water, I've made the main water shader more realistic to fit better with the scene by using an additional mask texture to fake caustics on the water surface. The shader is based on the water shader I've made some time ago with a few changes. You can download this shader on godushaders.com in case you are interested. 
I also replaced the staircase of the tower to be an elevator. However, during this process I encountered a bug that occurs when the player uses the elevator with a frame rate lower than 60 FPS. The player starts to hop up and down on the elevator, which is a similar issue I had with the moving platform in the old tower scene. To resolve this, I modified the elevator model from a static body to a character body, which can be applied to all types of moving platforms. Additionally, I recommend to use physics process instead of just process to avoid any stuttering of the movement from the elevator itself. So, thank you for watching this video on the current status of the first main level in the inner tower. While this is only the concept of the level and there is still work to be done, I hope you enjoyed seeing the progress I have made so far. Traversing the level may be not complex enough at the moment, but I have plans to add more splitting and reconnecting paths to make it more fun exploring the area. I appreciate the support and I look forward to share more updates with you in the next video. Goodbye. Thank you.